5G, which business domains have the most revenue potential for telcos and which industries are the early adopters. But also, what game-changing applications can we expect in the coming years? Diran Doshi, he's the Vice President and Head of 5G Asia Pacific and Japan at SAP. And he's here to talk us through all the 5G opportunities and the potential. Welcome, Diran. Hi. So telcos, they are building their 5G networks and they do this at, at a rapid pace. And there are many opportunities in different type of areas. So what are the key areas you think telcos should focus on initially to generate revenue? Yes, that's, that is a very important question because uh, we all understand the huge capex involved in rolling out 5G networks. Depending on where you are, the answer to that question can be different, right? We must look at it at least from two different perspectives. Number one, vertical industries, and number two, horizontal processes. So if you were in Australia or Japan, for example, uh, where you know the industries are quite different, uh, agriculture, mining, oil and gas, for example, in Australia, or high-tech manufacturing in Japan, uh, clearly the telcos would be following the money and, and you know, setting up the initial use cases, um, the initial trials and rolling out um, the, the exploration of 5G uh, aligned to the industries within their territories. Likewise, from a horizontal process perspective, we are seeing a massive interest from at least two um, horizontals. Number one, it's around asset management. Number two, around logistics and supply chain. So those are pretty interesting because they span multiple industries, but uh, you know, depending on indoor, outdoor, private versus public 5G, there are various different value levers that a telco can bring to bear and you know, discuss with enterprises on how this might combine with the existing technologies uh, like Wi-Fi, 4G and the works, how advanced connectivity might elevate some of this uh, business value across different industries and different processes. If I had to pick a few just to, just to answer the question directly, where should telcos start? I think it's important to break it down into the public versus private. In public, in the mass market, there are certain, you know, with 5G on-site in campus, um, there are certain use cases such as uh, entertainment, sports, uh, at stadiums, for example, that, that become low-hanging fruit, especially uh, also private 5G in retail malls, uh, and how that might potentially, uh, you know, deliver value to all uh, constituents within that facility. Uh, on the other side, we might look at um, potentially some you know, specific industry cases like manufacturing, where across the manufacturing process, there's uh, value to be had by exploring uh, or leveraging 5G. Yeah, talking about all those industries, we see developments of 5G initiatives. Um, you mentioning industry and manufacturing or smart cities. You mentioned media and entertainment, and there are many more. Are there specific industries that will be first to benefit from 5G capabilities? And can you share some examples? Sure, especially in Asia Pacific, it's interesting we are seeing two ends of the spectrum. So on one end, we are seeing the usual suspects, uh, high-tech manufacturing, where they're looking at you know bringing uh, intelligence, uh, coupling that with the high bandwidth, low latency that 5G brings within a, a plant setting, a manufacturing plant setting, right? Uh, so for example, the coexistence of robots alongside humans, uh, you know, delivering automation at a, at a different scale, but still allowing human uh, presence, human intervention, uh, just higher up the value chain. So on one side, we are seeing manufacturing. On the other, and then less uh, obvious, would be in an industry such as agriculture. Uh, what's, what's interesting is agriculture, which is traditionally considered sort of low tech, has actually become very high tech. Some of the, some of the matrix they are chasing uh, around yield, around uh, you know, optimization of uh, or rotation, but based on data, based on um, analytics, and you know, matching that against um, you know, things like seasonal, uh, weather patterns, um, you know, and then rainfall and so on, right? So uh, we're seeing with 5G, um, a lot of uh, use cases emerging where in the past IoT kind of fell a bit short by itself, but uh, with 5G and then some of the low power uh, use cases that come along, you know, for wide uh, expense areas, um, that's actually another industry that is, um, you know, be being discussed a lot, at least in Asia, Pacific and Japan. Uh, we are also seeing things along retail, where um, you know, there's a lot of uh, use cases around enhanced 
experience for shoppers, but also in terms of security, access control, emergency response within crowded facilities. Um, and you know what's what's interesting is uh, looking at uh, something that spans many of these, which is transportation and logistics, right? So whether you're talking about uh, airport, you know, uh, hubs such as airports, ports, terminals, railway stations, or the actual transport layer, um, there are a lot of uh, potential 5G use cases we are exploring currently uh, in discussion with various industry leaders. And you're addressing this low latency as a very important part of 5G. So when you think about game-changing 5G use cases and applications such as uh, autonomous vehicles, but also, for example, remote surgery, which really needs this low latency, what other 5G game-changing industry application do you expect to be realistic in the next, uh, let's say, five to ten years? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, the future is yet to be defined, but but you know what we do now and then the decisions we make now will shape that future. Um, I think there is a there is a meeting of of you know a few converging technologies. So if you look at five G edge artificial intelligence, uh, of course powered by a lot of machine learning algorithms, um, and the fact that you can now harvest data across uh, you know a very fragmented landscape from different devices. Uh, from different sources, pull all of that in and, and basically um, do processing at the edge, but also supported by uh, data in a central cloud. Uh, we are seeing many possibilities, and I think it's going to be a gradual phase-wise uh, pushing of the boundaries. So uh, interesting one is remote access to expertise, right? So remote surgery, I guess it's, it's, it's one that people understand uh, it's quite easy to visualize. But uh, alongside that, if you had, uh, if you take a particular industry, if you take maintenance of um, high-tech machinery, right, where it's very specialized. And today there's there's a huge lag time because in some of these fields, there are some, there are few experts and they tend to be uh, localized, right, in terms of geography. And, and there is a huge um, downtime, so to speak, while, you know, these resources get flown around. Now in that scenario, applying, you know, um, augmenting it, uh, with AR, VR powered by this low latency, but also allowing access on consumer grade devices to the worker, the fit on the ground, but with the right, you know, uh, HoloLens, for example, capturing data, seeing what the operator is seeing, but then sending that back in real time uh, to, you know, uh, expert remote uh, who, who's in a remote location uh, and then providing all the necessary data uh, you know whether it's a digital twin or something else, and bringing all of that together to basically have more informed, effective decision making, uh, where the experts can then guide the operator on the ground. Uh, and then this you, you you would see applies in so many different uh, industries, right? So take any um, specialized uh, machinery, specialized specialized equipment, um, or you know high level process. Uh, a lot of these can be basically scaled up. So we're seeing that as, a, as, as definitely something that is uh, you know, developing. The other one we're seeing quite a lot is around entertainment. Um, so how you can basically elevate the experience by combining the physical and the virtual, right? Or, or the physical and the digital, or, or digital as it's, it's uh, you know, uh, lovingly called now. And uh, again, it's, it's a marrying of the old world, the physical world, the real world, and the new or digital or virtual. Right? And some of those things with latency at scale, right? with the right uh, bandwidth, and, and that allows many participants, uh, both real people as well as you know, avatars and, and so on, whether it's gaming, it, in sports, in entertainment, uh, and in many cases, uh, some business applications, uh, it, it really you know, opens up possibilities for so many things. And then this, all of this can be applied also you know, in terms of, um, if, if you look at experiences at stadiums, if you look at, even the driving experience, right, uh, of the future. Uh, these are some of the things that are actively uh, being pursued right now. 5G is definitely going to bring us some game-changing new developments in, in the coming years. Thank you, Deering, for sharing these great cases, these great near-future possibilities of 5G. And for the audience, thank you for watching, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.